So no, um, so this is a report for July 4th until July 11th. So keep in mind that we're in the eclipse season for July to mid-August. So we have a solar eclipse on July 12th coming up and then a lunar eclipse on July 27th. So the time that we're in right now, it's really about preparing for this solar eclipse, right? Because it's the new moon solar eclipse. And eclipse season is when a portal opens up from the invisible world into the material world. So what does this mean? Well, this is divine energy coming in that's going to speed up our evolution. And it's also personal to you according to your destiny. So it can play out in different ways. So, for example, I was talking to a couple the other day and they were both in shock. They were given an eviction notice that day from a place that they've been living for the last 18 years. And they were both afraid and in shock, as you can imagine. Plus, they were not the kind of people who would initiate change, right? The rent was cheap for Hawaii, and they were comfortable. And one of them, actually, she said, I wanted to move to a bigger place, and a friend of hers offered a place to her a month ago, but they turned it down because the rent was more expensive, right? But still affordable for Hawaii. And now she sees it as a missed opportunity, right? We're all given signals before change happens. So if you don't make the change yourself, like this couple, for instance, the universe will do it for you. So remember that it's all these shocks are all for the greater good to keep you growing, keep you evolving and bringing you some to somewhere better. So for this report, I want to look at Mars, which is in retrograde right now. And it's in the 19th gene key, which is the shadow of codependence, the gift of sensitivity, and the city of sacrifice. So what's really interesting is the day of the solar eclipse, Mars moves into the 41st gene key, which is the start conon for the whole shebang, right? That's the start. That's the very beginning. And this brings us to a whole new human experience, right, for the collective. A whole new experience for me and for you. So we move to the very beginning of the mandala. So this is really showing us that we're in a dissolving phase until the solar eclipse, when we get the karmic reboot. So it's all about letting go. So back to the shadow of codependence that Mars is in. This shadow is about our attachments to a person, a job, a place, money, a situation, right? And guess what? If this thing is no longer serving your soul that you're attached to, it will be taken away. And not as punishment, but to show you that you don't really need it. So codependence is the shadow that makes us give our power over to an outer authority. And we've been brainwashed to be codependent. We are a co we're a codependent species. We've been taught that the outer world is going to give us a sense of security, but it's false. And it will only give us a sense of security if we play by the rules, which means remain servile, remain weak, obey, right? Be small. We've been taught how and what to think through our educational system, our government, our religions, the media, and on and on and on. We're always in that conditioning field from day one. So try this experiment sometime. Ask someone who holds a different viewpoint than you. Ask them, why do you think this way? And if this person is unconscious, chances are they're going to get annoyed with you, right? Anger will come up and they'll project that anger onto you for making them feel this discomfort of their codependence, right? Their shadow. Or they're going to parrot an answer that their parents told them or the media told them or the political affiliation told them or some other institution told them 
something that they gave their power over to because it's not coming from an authentic place. So therefore, reaction comes. And this is really tribal consciousness that demands that you go along with the tribe. And if you don't, you're a Russian spy. You're a communist, a terrorist, a crazy person, an enemy of the tribe. So you can see how our false leaders use this shadow of codependence to their advantage. Because we're not taught to be ourselves. We're not taught to follow our hearts, follow our inner authority, right? Especially if it's going against the tribe that is not encouraged by the tribe. We're taught that it's dangerous to walk away from the tribe. We're taught that it's dangerous to think differently than the tribe. We're taught that we cannot survive without tribal support. So when you're in a tribal consciousness, you're not really thinking for yourself. And you can fool yourself up and down till the cows come home that you're a free thinker, but you're not. Because those beliefs, right, they're cut, the thoughts, they're not coming from you. They're coming from someone else. So codependence can come through our relationships, of course. Right? There may be a deeply buried belief that you cannot possibly survive without a partner in your life. And this is also our conditioning. We're conditioned to be in partnership. So how, how many people do you know that flit from one relationship to the next without any time in between or not much time in between so that they get to know themselves, that they get to reflect on what they learned from that relationship? No, they flit to the next one and drag all the problems with them, all the shadow patterns with them. They take on the new person's habits, their belief system, because they don't really know themselves. Or, you know, they become overly focused on another person. And the belief here, as long as I can make that other person outside of me happy, or I can fix them, then I'll be secure, then I can be secure. And it's not true. You know, we could be codependent with a job that robs us of our soul, robs us of our vital energy, just for that paycheck that comes every two weeks. We can even be codependent with our spirituality, right? That teacher, that person, there's more powerful than me. They have a special connection to the divine that I don't possess. Right? You see this all the time in spiritual communities. The shadow, this particular shadow, is the root of all religions. We're taught that God is on the outside of us. God is in a book. God is in those sacred words. God is in that mantra. It's in that statue. It's in that crystal. It's in the um, flower essence. It's in the, it's in the church. It's in a temple. It's in that alien. It's in that ascended master. Basically, God is in everything else out there, but never inside me. So that's been the biggest lie told to us by the Piscean Age. And the lie is that God's on the outside of you and that you need an intermediary to get to God. Right? There's always someone or something in between you and God. That's a big, big lie. So in the Aquarian Age, we're learning that God is inside. God is inside you. God is inside me. And you have a direct connection to God if you let go of the shadow of codependence. So you're not separate from the divine. As long as you continue to give your power over to an outside authority, you remain a victim. It's just the way it goes. There's no way around this. So as long as you search for security outside of yourself, because that's what this is really about. It's the shadow searching for security. You know, whether that be a relationship, your uh, retirement savings plan, a paycheck, all the money in your bank account, right? Going along with the government, playing by the rules, you're going to suffer. So Mars here is working to liberate you from all of your attachments, your unhealthy attachments. And where in your life are you being called to break free? 
What's getting you angry these days? These are all the hints. Go there and explore this more. What am I attached to? What am I giving my power over to? So for the Aquarian age, each one of us must stand alone in our truth, capital T, truth. And the gift here is sensitivity. And this is getting in touch. This is being in touch with the higher, subtler realms of existence, which are still part of us, still part of you. We're multidimensional beings. So if you suddenly see an angel in front of you, that angel is not separate from you. This is only a reflection of your higher consciousness. It is you. You know, it's interesting to note, if you know Doreen Virtue, I looked at her chart. She has this gene key in a prominent position. And it's in her unconscious. It's her radiance. It's called her radiance. And if you followed her, right, she's the angel lady. She was a fan, one of the first famous New Age teachers. But now she's a born-again Christian and denouncing some of her cards and her books as the work of Satan. And she talks about her experience of seeing Jesus Christ appear before her in a church. And this led her down this road of giving her power away to the Bible, to an entity that she believes is separate from her. So to me, this is an example of how this shadow can work. Now, I don't claim to know the whole story, her whole story. I'm just sharing what I see. So a good Kundalini Yoga meditation to practice, to work with the shadow, is to use the mantra, I am, I am, I am, I am. And when you state out loud, I am, right, the mind goes, what? So it goes through the Rolodex of everything your ego has identified with, whether that's a teacher, a mother, a healer, a partner, whatever the role is. But before that, the mind gets to flip that up, it doesn't have a chance because you assert I am right after. I am, I am. So this brings you to your true identity. I am what I am. I am what I am. So when the form dissolves, your roles dissolve, your body dissolves, this world that you see dissolves, all that's left is I am, I am. This is your true identity. So this is what we're preparing for. I don't mean to sound morbid, but we're preparing for a conscious death, right, for the Aquarian age. So in yogic terms, it's called Jivan Mukti. It's dead while still alive. That means that you realize the I am, I am, right, before the body drops, etc. Right, and then fear can't touch you, right, when you face the fear of physical death. So try this meditation a little bit with me, okay? So you're going to come up sitting up straight with a straight spine wherever you are in your chair or whatever. And you're going to pull a uh, light chalunder bund. So that's bringing your chin slightly towards your chest, like so, right? And this, this ensures that your, your spine is straight, because our spine is a staircase of energy. And you're going to bring your right hand into Gyan Mudra, so right uh, thumb and index finger touching. And then rest that on your right knee. You're going to raise the left hand so that the palm is facing your body towards your heart center. And the palm is flat with the fingers pointing to the right. Okay, so let's do about six inches in front of the chest. Right, so you're going to, do, you're going to chant I am as you move your hand closer, like four inches. Okay, and then you're going to chant another I am and bring it 12 inches. And then back to six, I am, I am, back, I am, I am. Okay, so do this with me. Don't turn off the video. Just have the experience. Eyes are closed. And inhale deep. I am, I am. 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 
I am, I am. I am, I am. I am, I am. I am, I am. I am, I am. I am, I am. I am, I am. I am, I am. And inhale. Suspend the breath. And exhale and relax your hands down. Okay. So share what your attachments are, right, that you're letting go of this week. You've been given little hints. If you pay attention in your life, you've been given hints of what you're being called to let go of for this eclipse. This eclipse is the reboot. It's going to send you in a whole new direction, right, for your next, next cycles of experience. So I have this full 11-minute meditation that you had a little taste of for this particular shadow, and it comes with a guided meditation afterwards to transmute the shadow of codependence into the gift of sensitivity, as well as reflection questions for you to contemplate. So it's for sale at an affordable price, and you own it, right? You can download it to your computer. You don't need to be online. You can practice it. So if you're really called to this, if you know this shadow is, oh, this shadow is mine, then please uh, go ahead and purchase it. And if you want to receive at least two free meditations a month based on the shadow astrology transits, the cure, then sign up to become a monthly Patreon. And this meditation will be part of uh, the beginning of that. So all links can be found below. Okay. And uh, check me out on Instagram, Facebook, etc. All links below. And have a great week. And take your time. Take your time driving. Take your time doing your task, living your life. Because most people are very reactive and aggressive right now to this evolutionary energy. But you stay conscious and you stay awake. And focus on your own healing. And then you're just going to glide through this change. Okay? Trust you're being um, guided somewhere better for you. Okay. Satnam. So, no,